Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of the GC Informer and another year of gaming goodness. I'm your host for today, Mark, also known as Coistorch, and today I've brought a few interesting tidbits. Paladin's Battlegrounds has officially been announced. That's right, the free-to-play team-based hero shooter will be adding a new Battle Royale style mode later this year. I don't really agree with the choice of name as it's very obvious what title inspired this mode, but it seemed like the obvious choice given the current trend in multiplayer shooters. I've played a little of the base game myself and while it was enjoyable it felt like they were throwing too many ideas from other games into their own, like card collecting hero and character role mechanics and now Battle Royale. It could also potentially blow up in the devs' faces as the key to Battle Royale modes is that everyone is on equal footing. It's a little hard to accomplish something like that in a hero shooter where some characters are direct counters to others with different skills, strengths and weaknesses. We could also see a repeat of what happened during Fortnite's Battle Royale mode with PUBG accusing them of copying ideas. Next we have rumours circulating of a potential Burnout Paradise remaster for current gen hardware. Several international retailers have been spotted listing a potential remaster of the 2006 racer. As this isn't an official announcement and just a rumour at this point, no one is sure if it'll be a straight port of the game or if it'll have new features and content. If the rumours are true, then it would be in EA's best interest to announce the game soon as the listed dates point to March this year, which really isn't far away at all. I'd personally be really happy to see Burnout Paradise come back as the Burnout series was pretty much the only other racing game I would play besides Mario Kart. But worst comes to worst, you could always pretend the game was remastered by playing the title through Xbox One's backwards compatibility. Now while we're on the topic of EA games, let's talk about Anthem. While not a lot is known about this title besides a spring 2018 release date, it's already gained its fair share of drama. Bioware fans and gamers in general are worried that EA haven't really learned their lesson and are already looking at Anthem as the next game to implement loot boxes. While loot boxes themselves aren't inherently bad, we've seen them implemented in games unnecessarily or added as a means to lock actual gameplay content creating a disparity between paid and unpaid users. Bioware have been working on damage control, noting that they don't believe in locking gameplay experiences behind paywalls like that. Industry analysts are leaning more towards the fact that EA haven't completely dropped the idea, but do realise that if loot boxes are included, they should only be cosmetic, similar to the system that Overwatch have successfully implemented since the game's 2016 release. Personally, I'm just worried for the game itself, as I don't know how much creative freedom Bioware had on this one. I desperately want it to turn out good, but something in the back of my head is always telling me not to get my hopes up. Loot boxes themselves are just getting out of hand, as every big budget game suddenly feels like having random annoying microtransactions. Lastly, we have some good news from Monster Hunter World. It's still a little up in the air on how paid cosmetic options will work in the full title, but at the very least, gameplay will be completely unaffected, and new monster DLC and patches will be added for free. The latest trailer for the game showed off its rogues gallery of new and old monsters as well as confirmed the first free update monster, the Devil Joe, or Devil Yo, not really sure how to pronounce it seeing as no characters in game have ever really pronounced it before. I don't mind DLC like this, although it did seem just a little strange that a flagship monster like this isn't in the base game, but I suppose it's better than having the game delayed. I had some hands on time with the title and while I enjoyed what I played, I have a few reservations about the new HUD and Scoutfly system. Monster Hunter World will launch on PS4 and Xbox One on January 26th this year, and will hit PCs sometime in fall. The first title update, including The Devil Joe, will arrive sometime in spring of this year. And that's all for today's news. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and if you'd like to see more from me, you can find me right here at Gamecast as part of the review team, and over at Arisen Culture. Thanks for watching, bye!